Oh hi! I'm very happy to see you here. Today I have a very exciting project. I have recently been scrolling on Pinterest and I just can't get the pajamas as streetwear trend out of my head. If you've seen it, it's like this. It's boxer shorts at brunch, it's cute little pajama tops, it's matching sets, and I'm totally completely here for it. I'm going to the beach this weekend so it's time to make a cute matching set obviously. And so I thought I'd show you how I'm going to make it. My thoughts are an oversized pair of boxer-like shorts and a matching top. It's going to be oversized, maybe with a little puff sleeve, maybe with some lace or like ruffle details. Here are my reference pics for your perusal. Let's get into it. Also, hi, if you've never met before, my name is Carly. I'm really excited to meet you. I make sewing content here on YouTube. I also make content on Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon and if you like my stuff but you're not a sewist I also have my website where I sell one-of-a-kind happy handmade clothing. That's enough of that, let's get straight into the video. When you're scared of a sewing project you should start with the easiest thing, I firmly believe, and I'm scared so I'm starting with something that I know I can do which is shorts. I'm making everything out of this pink striped secondhand cotton and this secondhand lace. I'm not sure if I'll use it yet but it's there. Let me show you my short pattern and I'll tell you how I made it. Here are my front and back short pattern pieces and essentially I've folded my shorts that I like in half, traced around, added a little bit of seam allowance and a little bit of length for a nice thick hem and that's it. The boxes that I enjoy wearing are very oversized so I automatically have an oversized pattern but if your boxes are much more fitted you might just want to add a little bit more ease either in the crotch, the length, or the hip point. I'm not a pro at tracing my own clothing to make a pattern, and I'm also not a pro at pattern making, so bear with me. I will link some patterns that have a similar vibe in the description below if you would rather just print out a PDF and work alongside with me. But yeah, that's how I made that pattern. It is hodgepodge, it's not perfect, but it will get the job done. So I cut out two of my front and two of my back short panels. Basically the same shape except the crotch curve of my back shorts is a little bit less curved and there's just slightly more fabric in the back panel to account for having a butt. After much deliberation I do not think I'm going to add pockets to these shorts but you could add them in the side seam. I just don't feel like boxer shorts need pockets. The fabric is too light, you know? After making these boxer shorts last week, I have been wearing them non-stop. They're so comfortable and they were so easy to make, I probably made them in only a few hours. And to get started, all you need to do is sew your crotch seam together on the front and on the back. So that means putting your back pieces right sides together and sewing them at a half inch seam allowance like I am in this clip, and doing the same for your front pieces. Then once you sew that seam all the way down the crotch, you can overlock it or zigzag stitch, however you like to finish that, that is up to you. And as always, I love pressing out a seam and I just try and make it as crispy and neat as possible, ironing it from the front as well as the back. Once I had done that, then I could place my front short pieces right sides together with the back shorts pieces and then you can pin and sew that together at the side seams as well as the crotch seam but one step at a time do the side seams first and overlock them or zigzag stitch them when they're ready if you're doing pockets this will be the time to add your pockets after sewing the side seams, then you can sew the crotch seams, so you just align those back and front crotches, pin them in place, and sew that seam all the way down. You can also overlock and finish this seam as well. If you care about this sort of stuff, before overlocking your seams, it's a good idea to just check that you got your crotch seam aligned. Mine's not perfect, but it's close enough. I'm gonna roll with that and just overlock. Yeah! And now we have a rough pair of shorts. 
we just have to add elastic to the top and hem the bottom and maybe I want to add some lace I think but pretty good that's an oversized short in my experience my favorite thick elastic to use for a uh, cuff or waistband is non-roll waistband elastic. It's ribbed. What makes it different is it has a really sturdy outside edge so it's not going to fold in half. I'm actually applying a lot of pressure and it does not want to fold in half. Whereas you can get this other elastic which sometimes is a lot more expensive and it doesn't have anything on the edges and it just folds in half so easily. Now I'm not exactly sure if I'm just using it wrong or something like that but I just know that I prefer this because it doesn't roll and it's just easy to work with. So yeah, I'm going to use one inch ribbed elastic non-roll for waistbands. Mine's from the brand Samco, you can get it at Spotlight if you live in Australia. Also let me show you my favourite hack which I found on the internet recently for even but thick hemlines or waistbands. It's pretty cool. So you just get a piece of cardstock and then you're going to measure the width of your elastic and Use your ruler to get a nice crispy line. And I also just add probably a few mils so that there is some excess seam allowance, whatever you would call it. Then you fold your fabric over this and you make it line up with that line that you drew. And that way it's gonna be so even the whole way around and it fits your elastic perfectly. There's no hassle using a ruler or anything like that. I'm literally obsessed with this method. I'm doing it for my hems and I'm doing it for my waistbands now. It's fire. These clips are just me pinning my hem and then sewing my waistband. You just sew all the way around, making sure to leave about a one and a half inch gap so that you can thread your elastic in and out. And then I just measured my elastic around my waist till I was happy with it and trimmed it there. To thread my elastic through the waistband of the shorts, I just put a safety pin on one end and that's going to add as our kind of anchor to the elastic and you can just put that through the hole, the gap that you left in the waistband and you just use the safety pin to shimmy it all the way through the waistband. So I've got my elastic with the safety pin and it just goes into the gap and you gently pull it through the opening. You probably already know this, but it's good to have a second safety pin on hand so that when the end of your elastic here reaches like the gap in the waistband, you can secure the end to the pants so it doesn't go all the way through, if that makes sense. So I'm at the end of my elastic, it's about to go through, and just to stop it getting pulled through, I'm just going to use the safety pin, jam it through the elastic, and then I'm just going to also put it through the waistband and that just stops it from moving all the way through. And that way when the rest of the elastic comes through the waistband, they will meet here and we can close them together. And also while I'm doing this, I just had to say a special hello to all of my patrons. You guys are the best. I love making that content for you on Patreon and there's a bunch of new patrons from this past week and... Yeah, it's just been very exciting seeing each person come through, so thank you so much. Um, if you're interested, I did just release this month's sewing breakdown, and it's actually not a sewing project. It is my crochet bobble stitch jumper, which looks like this. It's one of my most popular designs, and it's not a pattern, but it's a very thorough, like, 14-page document of how to best construct that jumper. So if that's something you've ever wanted to make, um, I'll leave the link below to my Patreon, and yeah. All that to say, hey patrons, you're the best. Um, let's get back into this. It's time to close up my elasticated waistband and then we're almost on the shorts. Before closing up the gap in my waistband, I just think it's a great time to try them on and just make sure that the elastic is like very comfortable and it's not too tight, not too loose. And yeah, I'm happy with mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And this is also a good time to check if you like the length of your hem. I think mine might be a tiny bit too short, so I might just quickly adjust that. Um, and then I'm done with all my try-ons, which is awesome. I just sewed over my seam in the elastic so that it lays nice and flat. And then I proceeded to close up the gap in my waistband, just pulling it so that it wasn't bunching or anything like that. Oh. 
Also, adding a tag is completely optional, but I do really recommend adding like a little ribbon or any sort of little piece of fabric just so you can easily identify the front from the back of your shorts. Because I've made these a few times and it's weirdly similar how the front looks to the back. Yeah, throw on a little identifier and it, it will make your life so much easier, I reckon. Then I hemmed my shorts and I decided that I did in fact want to add lace to them. So I sewed the lace in a loop, making sure that it fit the same circumference of my leg hole. Then I pinned it matching the seam to the inner seam of the leg and sewed that down, top stitching along the top of the lace and also on the bottom of the lace. They're done. Awesome. Time for the shirt. Honestly, I did not have much of a plan of how to make this shirt, so it was just a full send, just seeing how it went as we go. What I did was I picked a size 16 shirt pattern, which is a little bit oversized for me, and I folded it up so it was just a very short bodice, kind of sitting right at the top of my bust. Then I cut out a front and a back version of this, so the front was a square neckline, and the back I decided to do just like a very faint U shape. And once I did that, I had to create a facing. Because it was a square neckline, I couldn't do a bias finish. So this is facing. What I did was I just cut out basically the exact same pattern piece. But instead of doing the whole pattern piece the same, I trimmed about, I think it was about eight centimeters down. And that just creates this little piece of fabric that's going to help finish the neckline. I don't think I explained facings very good then, but you get the picture. And then I also just made it for the front as well, just making sure that the front and the back side seams were the same length so that they would fit together well. Then I sewed together my facing at the shoulder seams, right sides together at a half inch, and proceeded to do the exact same step on my main bodice, sewing that together at the shoulder seams as well. And you guys know me, I am a sucker for pressing out my work in between every single step. So of course I just pressed out those shoulder seams so they lay nice and crispy and flat. Before you sew your facing onto the neck line, it's probably a good idea at this stage just to make sure that you like the neckline and also that it just fits over your neck. And that is just coming from personal failure and experience. But yeah. Now we can just finish the edges of the facing. I'm gonna overlock mine, you can zigzag stitch if you like, and attach this to the neck. And that's gonna make it a nice, clean, beautiful finish. I feel like my clips here are quite long and intensive, but hopefully it is helpful if you've never done a facing before, you can see the steps and such. So I overlocked the raw edge of my facing because that will be exposed. And then I pinned down the facing to the neckline and this is right sides together. Then you just sew all the way around the neckline in the entire loop. I did this at a half inch seam allowance, making sure I pivot on those square corners. Then once you're done with that, you can just clip into those square corners so that they fold out really nicely and neatly. And I also like to trim the curved part of the seam allowance down to about a quarter or an eighth of an inch. Then you can fold your facing the other, the inside way and press that so it's nice and crisp. And then your neckline will have this beautiful finish to it. I personally love to top stitch my facing down, but this step is completely optional. And now we got this super sweet little portion of the top and I really do enjoy when you use a facing how you can kind of see underneath like this little outline of it. I just wanted a really endearing little detail. I don't know why but it's also very cute when you add this top stitch detail. I don't know. It's just cute. Anyway, I think it's time to add the next ruffle. I think I want one ruffle here and another ruffle here and tiny little ruffles in the seams between the ruffles. 
For the first tier, I cut out about a 10 inch panel that was about 1.4 times the length of my bodice piece. And I cut out one for the front and one for the back. Then I put my sewing machine on its longest stitch length and did some gathering stitches and gathered this piece of fabric so that it matched the top of my bodice piece. I then decided that I didn't want these curved sections and that it should just be a completely flat bodice and I attached a small ruffle to the bodice first, sewed that down and then I proceeded to attach my first panel on top of the ruffles and that is what gives it that lovely sandwich ruffle effect. I think I figured out how to do this side of the shirt shenanigan and I will tell you the order of construction and then I will show it to you. <clears throat> so first we construct the ruffle. My ruffle is about two meters long by four inches wide and the important thing I think is to make sure that it curves off at the end which I haven't done. If you can see on this ruffle here I just had it curve in so that when I attach my next gathered tier the ruffle is not going to get caught in it. It's just kind of going to flounce like that. I then sewed that ruffle right sides together along the shoulder or side seam of the bodice and that ran all the way from the bottom of the front to the bottom of the back. And then I overlocked that and got on to making my side seam panel. I hemmed the top part of this panel because that would be visible and I overlocked the other three sides of it so that I don't have to do any of that later. Then I just put this panel right sides together matching it to the front and matching it to the back of the bodice. So as you can see here I've pinned it to the front and the back and I just sewed it down both of those sections. And I thought it got the job done really nicely actually. That is the top part done. Now I'm just going to add another tier and a hem and decide if I want to add any more touches of lace or like little flourishes. I'm just preparing my second tier now. I'm not sure if I told you the measurements of my first tier, but it was about 1.3, I wanna say 1.3, 1.4 times longer than the top of my bodice, maybe 1.5, getting a little crazy. I definitely eyeballed that one and it was about 10 inches this measurement long. Yeah, I'm gonna say long, wide, whichever you prefer. I had this little flounce here which was about two inches wide and the same length. Now for my second tier, I'm gonna do about 10 inches plus about two inches extra for a thick hem. And I've made it about the same, 1.5 times the length of my first tier. <laughs> and my little flounce to go on this tier, same length as this, same length. Love it. To finish off the final steps of my shirt, I gathered the second tier and I also gathered my ruffle and I sewed that ruffle on first before attaching my second tier of the shirt. I just pinned that in place, sewed it all the way around the circumference and also overlocked that raw edge. I removed the basting stitches or gathering stitches and then proceeded to do my nice thick hem. I was able to top stitch this hem because it was so accurately ironed that it was no trouble at all. Love that, it looks so clean. And then I just top stitched this lovely gathered lace as my second ruffle for the sleeve and added my tag as a final detail. And then it was done. The set is all done. I'm so excited guys. It's such a good feeling when you can make something out of your own brain sometimes. Like it's just such a good challenge to see if you can figure out what order the steps need to go in. And it doesn't always go smoothly but it's good for the brain, you know. It feels like a, a sudoku or something, like a mental brain challenge. Anyway, it's done. I'm going to show you what it looks like. So I will say my goodbyes now. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate you. If you enjoyed the video, um, subscribe or give it a like, or you can also follow me on my other social media worlds. Every video I ask you a question, and usually it's what you're working on at the moment, but today I want to ask you what your proudest op shop fabric sewing find has ever been. Let me know. My best thrift finds of recent is not because it's particularly cool, but it has great sentimental value, and it's this horse 
bed sheet and it is the exact print that I had when I was probably about eight years old. I don't know what it will come yet, but I'm excited. Thank you so much for watching this video. Just by being here, you're supporting my art and my livelihood and it just means the absolute world to me. So thank you. I hope you have an amazing week and I will see you in the next video. Bye.